welcome to Momentum's virtual training series, where we invite expert facilitators to share their knowledge on topics that advance women in leadership. Thank you all for being here today at Momentum Leaders Virtual Training. Happy New Year. We're starting off January with Lisa Shuck. She is phenomenal. We have worked with her here on our team and just with our story branding, and she is just knows how to take you really deep and help you to be organized, be very systematic, and have a great plan for what you're coming into. I want to thank our sponsors so much for giving us this opportunity for it to be a free opportunity for all of us here. Um, thank you. And Lisa, thank you for your time with us. I want to turn it over to you so we can get this going and give you the most uh, most valuable time here. Uh, there'll be some more people hopping on, but thank you, Lisa. And I want to get you started. All right, guys, let me share my screen really quickly. All right. Can everybody see my presentation? Somebody say yes. And then let's go. Thumbs up. Awesome. All right. Here we go. I jokingly titled this Epic Quest because I don't know about you, but each year I get so excited about setting goals or resolutions and then, you know, life gets in the way. In fact, there is actually a day called Quitter's Day. It is the second Friday in January this year, and that's this Friday, January 12th, or 48 hours from now. But I hope any goals you set in place today, you don't abandon in the next 48 hours. A couple of years ago, I was challenged to change the way I looked at goals. We talk about setting a vision and goals and making them smart and how we're going to make sure we get everything done. But at the end of the day, 83% of us do not have written down goals. Action steps that help us build up to achieving the goal we want to achieve. We may have plans such as I'm planning on organizing all the closets in my house this year, or I have a goal to create more processes at work to be more productive and efficient. But a lot of us never get around to honing in on what we specifically want to achieve. And more importantly, and what changed my perspective on this process, is the question, what has to be true in our lives, both personal and at work, to make that happen? Today, we're going to embark on a journey, an epic quest, if you will to look at goal setting and time management a little differently in order to achieve success in 2024. It seems easy enough to set a goal and make a plan, get to work, stick to it, and then voila, we've reached our goal. Yet statistically, that just does not hold out to be true. We're going to look at creating a vision and the why behind the goals we create and the objectives, time, and resources needed in order to make things happen in a way that I hope is a little different than what you may have heard in the past. This next hour will be interactive and that I want each of you to begin to map out your goals, whether for work or for your personal life, and then determine objectives, resources, timelines, success metrics, put it all together, so to speak, so that on Quitter's Day in 48 hours, you're not a quitter. And instead, you are beginning to achieve and feel like you can achieve success. So grab this month's momentum download if you haven't already done so. I believe Darla or Lindsay are going to drop that in the comments. If you don't have it, just grab a piece of paper and a pen and let's map out 2024. Whether you are setting personal or business goals, the thinking through and setting up of a vision and then goals and action plans give us a sense of purpose, something to strive for. I think that's why we all love the beginning of the year and crafting our New Year's resolutions or crafting goals and visions is that it's something in the future that we're motivated to achieve, right? 
it helps with momentum and motivation, decision making, accountability, and organizational performance and success. You may already have in mind, you may have already thought through what your vision and your goals are for the year, and you may not. But today, this moment in time, I want you to think about your vision for 2024, business or personal, that we will then work with and plan out over the next hour. And we're going to make it smarter. Smarter. You may have heard of SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. But have you ever heard of Smarter Goals? Created by Michael Hyatt and his team at Full Focus, the premise is that unless we craft a vision and goals that are also risky and exciting, then the vision and goals we set aren't big enough or honed in enough on what we want to achieve. I love this. Yes, to a vision that is exciting. Now, we don't have the time to stop and wait for all of us to think through smarter goals right now. But if you want to work on this, I'll give you a way at the end to keep this going with some accountability over the next week or so to encourage and support you as you write down smarter goals to go with your vision for 2024. All right. Words are important, yet words have different levels of meaning to different people. I use the word vision for an overall word. You can also use resolution. The reason I use vision is because it is the big picture. Now, we're going to break down the big picture, this vision, into quarterly goals and objectives. And for you EOS practitioners out there, you can also call them ROCs. But goals and objectives set on a quarterly basis will make success more achievable. For the sake of today's presentation, I'm going to use a standard vision a lot of us have at this time of year, our health. So I'm putting it out there. This is my health vision for 2024. Living a brain healthy, active lifestyle that allows me to bike the longest routes on a backroads trip to Normandy in 2025. Now, to me, this is much more exciting and a little bit riskier than just saying I want to lose 10 pounds or be able to ride 50 miles a day on my bike. I would encourage you to set a vision for your professional life and your personal life. We all have or should have goals at work, but I'd like for you to also be proactive in thinking of where you want to grow, where you want to be a year from now in your career, and craft a vision with goals and objectives for making that happen. Make it exciting and perhaps even a bit risky. All right. If you haven't downloaded the action plan we're working from, go ahead and grab it from the chat and get it open or grab a piece of paper and a pen. You can see that we've given you space for three visions. Then the next box is for what you need to be able to do for your vision to be achieved. If we think of my example of brain healthy eating and riding the long routes on a bike trip, then three things I need to achieve are, one, I need to research, define, and find recipes for brain-healthy eating. Two, I need to be able to ride 50 miles a day, two days in a row. And three, I need to determine, date, and book my trip to Normandy. From these, quarterly goals will be achieved. So with that, we're going to write down one of our visions or resolutions for 2024, business or personal. Yep, we're going to write it down. And if you'd like to share, in fact, I encourage everyone to share because statistically writing down what you want to achieve boosts success by 42%. I'm going to go so far as saying writing it down gets you 42% of the way there. Kidding. But 
take a moment and think about your vision for yourself at the end of 2024. And I don't care if it's business or personal oriented. And if you can make it smart in the next 60 seconds, that's great. And if you can make it smarter, that's even better. But let's throw it in the chat so we can encourage and support you. So y'all start dropping what your goals are for 2024 in the chat. I love it. Invite more friends over for dinner. Yes, social connections, so important and it's so hard. We always want to and then we never do it. Anybody else got that, uh, got a goal going on? Work, better work-life balance. Ah, uh, Kathleen, I see you. Lead one person through TRX. A peaceful home. Lexi, one for, run further than 10K. Okay, well, that is something I will never do, but yes. Oh my gosh, four days in Machu Picchu? Y'all, your, your visions for 2024 are exceptional. These this are pretty is, awesome, aren't they? I love watching great. this. This is exciting. <laughs> this is so fun. 1,200 miles, 23 miles a week. Oh, heavens. Y'all, this is so fabulous. I love these visions for 2024. This is great. I like Tiffany's to slow down. Yes. Personal peace. Yes. This is great. Tina, I'm available for dinner. <laughs> I love that, Catherine. <laughs> this is fabulous. Tina, you're probably going to have the whole list of people from here that are going, hey, when are we invited to dinner? All right. We've got our vision. Here we go. Now we are going to break it down. The fun part we're going to take what you have just said your vision is, and we're going to break it down into quarters, putting time parameters on it with goals for each quarter. Each quarter, we will have one to three goals to focus on for 90 days. And then for each goal, we will define what does success look like and the three objectives, which when will the 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 when met will mean success for you. All right, we are going to switch over, who's in my place here, switch over to the quarterly vision planner, which is just the sheet two of the download. So here's what we're doing. On the first sheet, you're going to write your three visions, and one of those would be work-life balance or management. One of them would be inviting more friends over for dinner, and one of them might be to get a certification at work, right? That's your vision. Then there would be three things that you have to do to be able to make that happen. Now, we're going to go to page two, the quarterly vision planner, and we're going to look at dividing that vision up into goals. So choose one of yours, and then we are going to have up to three goals for each quarter. So that means you would need three pieces of paper if you had three goals, right? Let me give you an example, right? Using my 2024 vision of living a brain healthy, active lifestyles, blah, 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 right? We're going to break down the first quarter into three goals that I need to achieve to be on track to accomplish my 2024 vision, right? So for me, by the end of the quarter, I need to be able to ride 15 miles at one time, two days in a row. I need to be physically active five days per week, and I need to eat 50% of my meals brain healthy. I'm going to give you a minute to jot down three goals for quarter one. You can refine them later, right? Because once you have those three goals and what you'll see is what it takes to achieve your vision is breaking it down into bite-sized pieces so that then you can set up weekly priorities and know that, hey, this week, if I'm going to achieve my quarterly goal that sets me up to achieve my annual vision, then I have to do these one, two, three, four, five things. And then you can plan to make that happen. So take just a second and think for a minute and jot really quickly three goals that go with your long-term vision for quarter one that you need to achieve.
All right. I know it's not enough time and I know you're like, I'm not done yet, but we're getting started. Okay. So once we have our three goals, then this is what I said at the beginning, change my perspective on vision and goal setting. This is the best question to ask whenever you're trying to achieve a goal. Heck, I use it when looking at projects for work. I use it when I'm doing strategic planning facilitations and companies say to me, we want to do this in 2024. I go, great. What has to be true for that to happen? Right? Because it makes you, if you start with the end in mind, right? What does that look like? What has to be true along the way for that to happen? Because what has to be true for you at the end of a quarter going into the next quarter for it to add up at the end of the year to success? The reason this is important is because there will be times during the course of the year, and it's actually been scientifically evaluated, that motivation ebbs and flows. Of course, we all know this, right, already. We did not need this to be scientifically validated. But there will be times during the year when something will happen in your personal or business life that means you have to adjust. And you need to know what needs adjustment in order to stay on track or to adjust your end metric, which, by the way, is okay to do. Asking yourself what has to be true gives you the opportunity to think through and define what needs to happen in other areas of your life in order for you to achieve your primary objective, which leads to a goal and ultimately to successfully accomplishing your vision. I have, look, here's my sticky note. See, can you see it? I have what has to be true written on a sticky note on my computer to remind me to think through the different pieces that together make up what I am trying to achieve. Okay, here we go. Discipline, motivation. Yes. All right. You have your vision. You have a set of quarterly goals. You are asking yourself what has to be true for you to accomplish your quarterly goals. These are your objectives. Ever heard of the power of three? We are predisposed to recognizing patterns. And three is the bare minimum of instances needed to create a pattern. So I love to define three things that will help me achieve my goal. For instance, if I want to be physically active five days a week and I have a goal of being able to ride 15 miles two days in a row by the end of the quarter, I should probably be on the bike two or three days a week, probably more. Then one other day I can strength train, another day I could do yoga, because once I set my objectives for the quarter, I will set weekly priorities, meaning what do I need to do each week to achieve my overall objective, which then, again, leads me to accomplishing a goal and vision success. So really quickly, take a minute and drop in the chat. What are your three things that you have to do to achieve your quarterly goal in the first quarter? Just drop them in. Three quick things. What do you have to do? I got to ride a bike two or three days a week. I've got to exercise five days a week. Uh, what are your three things that you have to do this quarter? Because remember, if you write them down, 42% of it is already accomplished. <laughs> Make time, plan ahead, find an accountability partner to check in on me. Perfect. Yes. Then you look at your calendar every week and go, where's my time? Completely paid vacations. Wait, I need to have this vision. Oh, that's fabulous. Time management, wake up 15 minutes, set timers, daily calendar. Yes. Hannah, to that, I just was listening to a podcast, Guy Raz's Wisdom from the Top. I recommend this one to everyone. It's BJ Fogg. He does the little um, sort of micro habits. For instance, if you want to read before bed, put the book on your pillow. So before your head hits the pillow, your head hits the book sort of a thing. Um, but yeah, that's great. Fabulous. Shopping list, sleep in my workout clothes. <laughs> Melissa, that's so fun. 
All right, here we go. Now, I hope everyone sees how taking the big picture and breaking it down makes your vision achievable. It's no longer just, I want to do this thing. It is, this is how I'm going to take the steps to achieve it. Because now you have a vision and a tactical action plan. And you know how to make adjustments by asking yourself, what has to be true along the way? I, I love this quote because it illustrates exactly what we're doing. We're taking our long-term vision and breaking it down. And by doing that, we won't overestimate because most people overestimate what they can get done in a month, but underestimate what they can get done in a year. This saying put any timeline in that, right? So you can overestimate what you can get done in a year and underestimate what you can get done in three years. Any time frame works. So by breaking this down and focusing on the smaller pieces, we won't overestimate what we can get done in the short term and we will accomplish and not underestimate what we can get done in the long run. These actions are small steps and priorities add up to be so much bigger. For instance, look at these. If you read 20 pages a day, you're going to read 30 books in a year. If you listen to one hour of a podcast per day, you will have listened to 365 hours. Think of all the knowledge, the learning that you could get done in 365 hours. If you run a mile a day, 365 in a year. By breaking down the big picture into manageable chunks, you can make so much more happen over time. You've heard the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, one bite at a time? Well, this is it. This goes along with James Clear's principle from Atomic Habits as well of making a 1% improvement each day. Yes, daily consistency. Leaning into the small things that then become bigger and ingrained and become habits over time. I actually, on that BJ Fogg podcast, I just want to drop this in. He jokingly talks about how to establish a habit of like flossing your teeth and use the lowest common denominator. So, so saying, okay, I'm going to floss my teeth after I brush my teeth is too big of a, of a habit. But by saying, I'm going to brush one tooth. That's it. That's the minimum effort required of me. Then you're going to do that and be like, I can do another tooth, right? But they have demonstrated that if you can break these things down into a small enough um, task or activity that you will actually achieve more. It's fascinating. All right. Now, I want to move into some tools on how to manage your priorities, objectives, and changes so that you can achieve your vision and goals. So one of the things that happens is that we run out of time, right? Uh, and the reason we run out of time is based on information and decision overload. Having too much information and making so many decisions each day can lead to poor prioritization which then causes us to get behind. And then we go, well, why should I even bother? I'm so far behind, I'll never be able to get this done. And it's all because we ran out of time. The reason behind this is because we go back to our most primitive self. We are hardwired to react, not to think. Our cave people selves wouldn't have survived without the ability to act. Imagine the cave family when they see this guy approaching. Do you think they stop? collaborate and listen, perhaps do a little brainstorming session on strategies for eliminating him and saving themselves. No, no, they react, they draw their weapons and they try to kill the beast. The brain's ability to think is overwritten by our ability to react, especially when we are stressed, overloaded or scared. Think of how many beasts pop up in your day every day. I, I'll take a minute. Drop one of your beasts in the chat. What is a beast that um, that occurs every single day? 
every single day that you have to fight back. Snooze button, Amber, emails, emails. You know what mine is though? Mine's also text, social media, yes. But I don't know about y'all, but this, this is terrible for me. People start texting, this or Slack, right? Um, social media saying yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely saying yes. <laughs> all right. So how do we manage this? Because we all do it. We all scroll mindlessly on social. We all get involved in a Slack channel mess that's social. We all respond to emails. We all have little people running around, or I actually have big people that are constantly texting me and needing things, right? So how do we do this? Well, in a Franklin Covey survey of 30, 350,000 people, respondents reported that they spend 40% of their time on things that are not important. Although I dare say sometimes Instagram is important, but there you go. You have the potential to achieve extraordinary things, exciting things, risky things, not by getting everything done, but by getting the right things done. And that starts with acting on the important. All right, we are now gonna move into a variety of time management techniques. Different types of people work better with different ways of working. So I'm going to offer several different ways and suggest which type of personality works best with a particular time management set. But one method that I encourage you to start with, and I actually think we should all do this, is the Eisenhower time matrix. Yep, this was created by Dwight Eisenhower, not by Stephen Covey. This matrix works well for people who have to deal with a lot of decision making. Everyone raise their hand if you are a person that has to make a thousand decisions every day. It's all of us. But look at what is important and urgent. Do or manage these. This would be a crisis, an upset client, a deadline, a date on a project. Those are the urgent, important things. Do or manage those to get done first. Next, the important but not urgent. These are the tasks that move you forward. This is your daily work. Focus on those. We have the urgent but not important, and this is where I typically stumble this is when you have a customer ask for something and they need it today, but they just asked for it last week and the week before, which leads me to the saying, one of my favorites, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine, right? So limit those not important tasks or delegate them to someone else if possible. And last but not least, those items that are not important or urgent, which we've all just mentioned, right, which includes scrolling through social media, looking for that new perfect chair, or going back and forth on Slack about social things and not work, delete or avoid these. Think through what you need to get done to move the proverbial ball down the field, so to speak, and focus on those. And once you've set those priorities, let's talk about some different ways that you can manage your time to make sure you get them done. One of my favorites, eat the frog. This works well for people who struggle with procrastination. I do better with that now, but eating the frog is one of my favorite ways to time manage because I'm best first thing in the morning. So I try and block that time to do the most important and or difficult thing that I have to do that day. I eat that frog. I just check that off my list, right? So try different ones and determine what works best for you, right? So if you say, I'll do these little things first and save the big thing because it will take more time or energy or whatever, and then you run out of time or energy or whatever, eat the frog. 
do the most important and or difficult task first thing in the morning. Now, did you know that a Pomodora is a type of tomato? Anyway, squirrel distraction. And that's what the Pomodoro technique is about. It was developed in the late 1980s by university student Francesco Cirillo, Italian, obviously. Cirillo was struggling to focus on his studies and complete assignments as he was easily distracted. Feeling overwhelmed, he asked himself to commit to just 10 minutes of focused study time. Encouraged by the challenge, he found a tomato timer, Pomodoro in Italian. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, and the Pomodoro technique took shape. Basically, this says set a timer for a set period of time, 25 minutes. When the timer goes off, give yourself a five minute break. Do that in segments of four sets and then take a longer break of say 25 to 30 minutes. This really works well for people who struggle with distractions because in their minds, if you are an ADD type of multitasker, right? This works well for that because a 25 minutes is a reasonable amount of time and it's been demonstrated that people can focus for that amount of time. So Pomodoro technique, number two, getting things done is list making and checking things off, which by the way, if making a list was a love language, it would be mine. And I also know that it is Kathleen Robinson's who is also on this call. Anyone else out there where making a list and checking it off your love language, I want to see a show of hands, right? It is, yes, we love lists. Yes, they're so wonderful. I'm an achiever. And making a list and checking things off is like a drug to me. However, if you don't leverage the Eisenhower matrix to determine what is important, you have the potential for making a list and checking everything off of it without accomplishing anything at all that moves you closer to completing a weekly priority or an objective and ultimately your vision. So beware, you achievers out there, to do something about prioritization and those to-dos before this. Sam says, do you ever write something you've, oh, hey, Sam, do you ever write something uh, you've already done down so you can enjoy scratching it off? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yes, 100%. In fact, there is a, um, there's a childhood book, Frog and Toad, right? And that's one of the things they do is at the very beginning, they go, what have we done? Oh, wait, I got up today. Oh, we can check that off the list, right? Yes, um, definitely me. Yes, frog and toad. No wonder you're a list maker. If it's not on the list, did it really get done? Yes, agree completely. But for those of us who are list makers, we really got to set those priorities or else we're going to end up at the end of the day with, yes, checking 25 things off our list. But did we ever really, really accomplish what needed to get done that day? Right. All right. Time blocking. We all manage multiple competing priorities each day. And many of us have multiple projects to track and complete. Time blocking is a way to manage those multiple responsibilities or projects by batching tasks according to a project. So for instance, um, project A, these would be tasks all related to a particular project you'd work on from 8 to 9 a.m., right? Then project B task you would work on from 9 to 10 a.m. Think of along the lines of buckets of time for each project instead of bouncing from one task and project to something completely separate. Um, I have tried this a couple of times and I really I love to bounce from one project to the other, but I did find that when I said, okay, I am going to, for the next hour, focus on this project and check off as many tasks as I can for this project, 
at the end of, of the time, I, I really significantly got more done. So this is probably the time management tool I'll be using more often. Um, last but not least, I want to talk about the pickle jar theory, right? And this works well for people who love creative thinking. The pickle jar theory is based, and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, and this image gives you a clue. Um, it, it's a technique that prioritizes tasks and responsibilities in a specific order. This theory, also referred to the bucket of rocks theory or the jar of life theory, light bulbs going off, people, was developed in 2002 by Jeremy Wright with the notion that time is a finite space that has limits. In short, the jar of pickles is an analogy where the jar represents our typical day, while the sand, pebbles, and rocks represent everyday activities. What's more, some sources add another element to the analogy, water, which stands for private life. We can fill the jar with different tasks and activities, but we need to respect a specific order and time estimate on each activity. Therefore, the pickle jar theory or the rock jar theory, bucket of rocks, helps us estimate how long a piece of work, either rocks, pebbles, or sand, will take to complete. So many of us relate to this in a jar, rock, pebble, sand, in a in the story about the professor that sets a glass jar on the table and he places two inch rocks in the jar until no more can fit. And he asks the class if the jar is full and they go, yeah, it's full. And he says, really? And he pulls out a pile of small pebbles, adding them to the jar, shaking it gently until they fill the spaces between the rocks. He asks again, is it full? Yeah, it's full. He then adds some sand to the jar, filling the space between the pebbles and asks the question again. This time the class hesitates because they're like, um, the jar is obviously full, but this could be another trick. And it is because then the professor grabs a pitcher of water and fills the jar to the brim saying, if this jar is your life, what does this experiment show you? One of the audience says, well, no matter how busy you are, you think you can always do more, which by the way, that is not the answer. The rocks represent, we've heard this, right? The rocks represent the big things in life, what you will value at the end of your life, your family, your partner, your health, fulfilling your hopes and dreams, what we're talking about here today. The pebbles are the other things in your life that give it meaning, your job, your house, your your opportunities, um, your friendships. The sand and water represent the small stuff like watching TV or scrolling social media or going to the grocery store. Looking out at the class, he asked, can you see what would happen? What would happen if you focused on the big rocks? And that's really what setting a vision and breaking it down into goals that's what you're doing, right? You can achieve so much more if you spend some time thinking through what it is you want to achieve and then breaking it down into bite-sized chunks so that you can achieve it. Asking every step of the way, what's the favorite question? What has to be true for me to make this happen? Okay. Before we move into takeaways and to don'ts and takeaways and to do's, drop in which time management you're going to choose. Are you going to try time blocking? Are you going to try the Pomodoro technique? What are you going to try? You're going to try eat the frog first. Which one? Time blocking. Time blocking. Yes. Look, time blocking is the fave here. Eat the frog, Kamala. Yes. Eisenhower. Yeah. Well, everyone needs to do the Eisenhower. Yes. List, Amelia. <laughs> yes. Hybrid, time blocking. Pick. This is just like setting the vision and goals, right? Focus on, hey, this week, I'm going to prioritize using the Eisenhower metrics. I know what needs to get done. And now I'm going to try the Pomodoro technique today. See how that works for me. 
Tomorrow, I might try the eat the frog technique. And then the next day, I might try time blocking. And I'll see which one works for my personality type and what works best for the cadence, for the flow of your day. Some days you have so many meetings that time blocking or the Pomodoro might not work and eat the frog is what you really need to be doing. But, but leaning into those skill sets will really help you be more productive and efficient with your time. All right, let us look at some takeaways and to don'ts. All right, I know everyone says shoot for the moon and even if you'll miss, you'll land on the stars and I am all about a big vision right? But please don't make it so big that you'd have to quit everything else in your life to achieve it, right? You, I don't think anyone on this call is an Olympic athlete. If you are, kudos to you. Yes, you have to quit everything else in your life to achieve that. But the rest of us need to craft a, a big vision, an exciting vision, a risky vision, and something you want to do. But don't make it so big that it is completely unachievable. And by all means, don't craft a vision without also taking the time to map out your journey. How will you complete your epic quest, right? You've got to have quarterly goals that have objectives and prioritization on weekly tasks to ensure you make it to the finish line. And for those list makers out there, I'm looking at you, Kathleen. Don't forget to use the Eisenhower matrix. What is of critical importance to get done? Or, in other words, let's focus on our to-dos. In a single checklist, here is what we've discussed today in a list for you to check it off, so to speak, to be successful, right? So take a look at your personal and business vision for 2024. Break that into quarters with goals and objectives. Ask yourself what has to be true to achieve success. Put it, put it where you can see it on your calendar. Look at it every day. Break down weekly priorities. Use the Eisenhower matrix. Gosh, I'm having difficulty talking. And, um, and pick some time management techniques to determine what works best for you. Because if you do this, you will be celebrating success at the end of 2024. And isn't that what we all want to achieve? All right. Want more? Okay, here we go. If you want more, and this is really a nudge because as soon as you get off this webinar, your multiple competing priorities will change right back if they haven't already while you were on this call. So as a little extra encouragement, you want to scan this QR code and sign up for five days of short. And when I say short, I mean really short emails with a little motivation that reiterate what we've discussed today. Basically, you will see my name in your inbox and say, oh, yeah, I need to do something today to make my 2024 vision a reality. And let's stay in touch. So please connect with me on LinkedIn if you have not already connected with me and tell me you were here. Now, I have seen a question in chat. So let me look at that. What about setting goals for quarters as opposed to an entire year? Is that worthy of a goal? Yes. And I think that there are a variety of different ways to do this. And you need to determine what system works best for you. So if you have, this is my goal for this quarter, and you break that down with objectives and actions, and you achieve that goal at the end of the quarter, then you can say, all right, I'm going to build upon that goal, and I'm going to do this in the next quarter. That is perfectly there is no right or wrong way to do this, right? This is just a way out of multitudes of ways to do this. Other questions? Drop them in the chat. All right. I want to make sure that you guys feel encouraged and energized and enthusiastic about 2024. So, will this deck be available? I don't, Darla, is that a yes? Yes, that is a yes, Joey. Um, I want everybody to, in the chat, before I turn this back over to, to Darla and Lindsay and Tina, I want you to write what your 
favorite enthusiastic word is? Write it down. My favorite word is enthusiasm, which means energy. What's your favorite word? Is it celebrate? Is it woohoo? Is it yay me? Right, celebrate yourself with a word. Awesome. Empower. Ooh, I love that. Empower. Give me a word. Yes. Incredible. Delight. Yes. Y'all have fun. Wowzers. Amazing. Just saying these words out loud. Joyful. Fabulous. Awesome. Y'all, you are all of these words, all of these words. And I want to encourage you as you go forth to create big visions and encourage yourselves and others to make big things happen in 2024. Thank you guys so, so very much. And Darla, back to you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Lisa, this was, I have taken like three pages of notes. <laughs> this is this is my wheelhouse. Thank you so much. And I know everybody has loved this. I love the interaction. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there, Lisa. I would like to have you back maybe in June, July, as do a, a check-in with everybody of where we're at on this and how we've done. I would love to see how everybody has maybe tried some of the different things. I know in the past I've tried all some of the different um, ways that you said, you know, getting things done through the time blocking, the Pomodoro technique. I have ADHD. So I'm going to try the frog and I'll let you know how that works. Uh, just eat the frog, do that, that first thing in the morning before I get anything else piled in on top of me. Um, so would love to hear from everyone else too. This has been fantastic. Um, I would like to... Um, There we go. Let's see, I don't know if I can do this. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, once again, I do want to thank, I, I don't want to miss uh, an opportunity to thank our sponsors again. If it were not for these amazing companies, we would not be getting to do this. So I want to thank them so much from the bottom of our hearts here at Momentum Leaders. And if you are interested and being one of our amazing sponsors, please reach out to us. We are here and would love to add your name to our list. <laughs> um, we do have a huge opportunity for everyone here with our conference coming up on March 21st. Please hop in right now. It's been all over the social media. It's on our website. Uh, call us if you would like to go ahead and get your tickets, get a table for your company. Um, we have got early bird special right now that I believe is running out very quickly. I think it's going to even be this Friday or this, uh, tell me on the date, Lindsay. I think that is it's going the to 12th be Friday. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. It is this Friday. So please take um, a minute and uh, take a look at that. We just would love to have everybody hop on. Our next um, virtual training will be February 21st. So you can sign up for that also on our site, but go ahead and scan us here. If you want to know any more about what we're doing here at Momentum, we just want to um, get y'all as engaged with us as we can. Um, and also the mentoring. I love that. That's my wheelhouse. And as Lisa and I were talking about earlier, having the opportunity to use our enthusiasm to bring people together and help change, change lives by just um, giving them what we've learned. Lisa, you were awesome today. Thank you so very much. And Thank we will see everybody soon, okay? Thank you. Momentum's virtual trainings are made possible with the support of Protective Life, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, and America's Thrift. Find the full list of sponsors, as well as additional resources for women leaders on our website at momentumleaders.org. Thanks for taking the time to invest in you, and remember to like, subscribe, and share our channel. We love reading thoughts and comments, so you can leave those for us here too. You can also connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn by searching at Momentum Leaders.